Hi friends, welcome to Smart News Digital. Let's have discussion for the date 9th of August 2018. Today's first topic is jail term for adultery does not make sense according to Supreme Court. Sending a person to prison for 5 years for committing adultery does not appeal to common sense according to Supreme Court. Adultery is dealt in section 497 of Indian Penal Code. Adultery is not a forceful event. It is happening between two adult people with more consent. When it comes to rape, it's a forceful event. One person is forcing the other. So it's a criminal offense. But Supreme Court says adultery does not even qualify to be called as criminal offense because an adulterous relationship is carried with the concern of women. It is not a forceful event. What is the government stand? Government says that adultery should remain in Indian Penal Code because it protects sanctity of marriage and it is for the public good. But Supreme Court denies this argument because protecting a marriage is the responsibility of both. The couple put together, they have to protect the marriage. It is not the responsibility of women or men alone have to protect the marriage. If any one of them fails, there is a civil remedy available to the other which is nothing but divorce. Supreme Court considers this section 497 of the Indian Penal Code as arbitrary because it gives husband the exclusive right to prosecute his wife's lover. But the wife does not have this exclusive right to prosecute a woman who committed adultery with her husband. This provision does not confer any right on the wife to prosecute her husband for adultery. This section 497 does not take into account in which the husband has sexual relations with unmarried women. Supreme Court observes that we expect from women the loyalty, trustworthiness, confidence, everything, but not from men. What is this? This is not general neutral according to Supreme Court. This news in transition we will see later. Today's second topic is Article 35A. This particular Article 35A has been in the news for quite some time. The same article has been dealt in detail on August 6th of 2018 uh, video discussion just have a look on that let's see briefly what it is article 35a empowers state legislature to define who are permanent residents of Jammu and Kashmir and it also provides state legislature the right to define the special rights and privileges to Jammu Kashmir people it also excludes the other state people from acquiring property from getting employment for instance, me belong to Tamil Nadu cannot acquire immovable property in Jammu and Kashmir. You may belong to Andhra Pradesh, you cannot get government job in Jammu and Kashmir. These are the rights given to state legislature of Jammu and Kashmir. This particular article 35A provision was added to the constitution through presidential order. This news has been in the news, we will see it later also. This news has already been dealt in 6th of August. Today's third topic is Supreme Court to constitute panel to look into issues in jails across the country. The court is hearing a matter relating to inhuman conditions prevailing in Indian jails. The court is not happy with the government's actions regarding to prison reforms. So Supreme Court came up with an idea to constitute a committee for prison reforms. This particular committee can have members from government side also. This committee will be under the chairmanship of retired judge. This committee will look into the problems in jails and they will suggest measures how to deal with that. The apex court expressed its displeasure over the states because many states have not appointed a board of visitors. Who are board of visitors? These board of visitors regularly visit prisons and look into the conditions that are prevailing in the prisons. Because Indian jails are not properly maintained, they are not maintained in accordance with the rules. You may be aware of the fact that Indian jails are overcrowded. What is overcrowding? For example, in a room, 4 people can accommodate. In that room, if you accommodate 10 people, it is overcrowding. Indian jails are witnessing this problem. In recent times, we have been witnessing unnatural deaths in Indian jails, which is a cause of concern. When it comes to women prisons, the prisons are not hygienic they are not clean you have to provide cleanliness in prison because prisoners also have human rights just because they have committed a crime and kept in prison you cannot take away the natural rights that they have today's fourth topic is welcome clouds and optimistic monsoon forecast 
The most recent assessment put by Indian Meteorological Department shows that the southwest monsoon will be normal. When, whenever IMD says that the monsoon will be normal, we will see some kind of relief because India is a country which is majorly agricultural economy and most of our population depends on agriculture. Agriculture needs rain. Rain comes through monsoon. Although they say normality is there, but there is a wide variations across the country. Some districts are hit by drought and some other districts are hit by floods. Compared to previous monsoon season, this season have witnessed lot of deaths and distractions. Many road and infrastructure have been destroyed. Massive investment is needed to rebuild them in the original level. Thousands of people had to shift to relief camps because the floods have affected their house. Their house have been destroyed, ruined. Such displaced families have to be provided enough relief compensation. And this is the lesson in next monsoon we have to take all the precautionary steps to prevent the loss of life, to prevent the destruction of roads and infrastructure. Spatial variations in the rainfall pattern will have a major impact on our agriculture and groundwater recharge. Water is the key determinant of India's agricultural output. National Commission on Farmers chaired by M. S. Swaminathan, the great scientist and eminent agriculturist, have recommended how to use the water optimally because, because most part of India is a rain-fed area, so we have to use our water optimally. Given the 60 percentage of 192 million hectares of grass sown area assessed by this commission, that is National Commission on Farmers, was found to be rain fed. What is rain fed? This particular region depends upon rain alone. They have no irrigation facilities. So an accelerated program is vital to harness the monsoon rain. State level programs must take all the measures to expand surface water storage and they have to launch more minor irrigation schemes. You might have aware of the fact that Pradhan Mandri Krishi Shinchai Yojana is for irrigation and they have to improve the recharge of groundwater. In recent times, our rainfall has been altered. This poses a great new challenge, especially to the agriculture sector. Alluvial soil of northern states benefit more from slow precipitation while the hard rock geography of south, that is peninsula region, needs heavy showers for groundwater recharge according to scientists. A future ready approach should therefore focus on augmented storage and greater participation of farming community, that is including agricultural people, including farmers in planning, in implementation, so that they can manage the vital resource which is nothing but water. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued normal outlook for August which is encouraging factor for agricultural people. A recent move by center seeking applications from outstanding individuals to fill 10 posts of joint secretary, it created a discussion. Lateral entry has been in the discussion for some time, so again it came in the news. This has been considered as the beginning of end of a neutral and impartial civil service. What it means? Till now, civil services has been considered as a neutral and impartial service. Now, because of this lateral entry, the neutral and impartial service may be affected according to some people. Political parties, that is ruling party, may induct their own loyalists using this lateral entry. And this marks the privatization of IAS that is private business houses they would plant their own employees in government services through this lateral entry and influence the government policies in our country we have cabinet system of government with a collective responsibility this needed a secretariat to play a crucial role typically civil servants are generalist government through lateral entry wanted to absorb a specialist a experts in particular field higher bureaucracy who are generalist in nature has to examine the proposals they are received from specialized departments and corporations. What is specialized departments and corporations? For example, Central Water Commission, public sector undertakings who are manned by specialist experts. They give proposals which are examined by higher bureaucracy who are generalist in nature. Then this higher bureaucracy consult with other ministries and departments to prepare a cohesive note. Followingly, the same higher bureaucracy facilitate the minister concerned and the cabinet concerned to take a final decision. 
So the entire consultation process is complex because then also the file moves through long internal and hierarchical process. The key officials in the secretariat from joint secretary to secretary are the point persons who are deciding any proposal with a consultation with cabinet ministers. A joint secretary to the government plays a crucial line function to perform policy formulation and implementation also. With changing times, complex economic and technical issues are emerging in the governance whether the higher bureaucracy who are generalist in nature acute to comprehend this complex economic and technical issues it is a question from the government side civil servants are recruited through tough competitive examination no one denies but they can cope up with increasingly complex matrix of decision making it is the question at the, that too at the senior level of government from the government side concerted effort should be made to help ias officers after their first decade of immersion in districts. This is for what? To acquire specialization in broad sectors like social sector, infrastructure and financial based on their qualification and their aptitude and their preference also. The idea had never been pursued so seriously by the government. Why this particular concept called lateral entry is creating fear among people? They fear that the number of lateral entrants may be increased with the time. And also they fear that the political leadership ruling party may create divide and rule mechanism and would further dem demoralize the steel frame of governance. In the name of recruiting outstanding individuals, politically indoctrinated persons can be inducted into the system. This was the fear. How to allay these fears? That is how this fear can be reduced by letting UPSC to handle this lateral entry also so that the transparency and accountability is maintained but provided they have to define the job requirements most explicitly. While dealing with the concept lateral entry, the government has to do certain things. The government must ensure that they have to fill candidates through lateral entry only in the sectors where the specialists are not available, where the experts are not available, not in the sectors where already specialists are available, where already experts are available. Those candidates who are inducted by lateral entry are performing truly outstanding means there should be some provisions to make them a permanent members in the government with the approval of UPSC so that we will have more talents in the system. There is already idea in the pipeline but it is not implemented that is IAS and other offices have to gain some work experience for a limited period in the private sectors to get expertise to get more knowledge about what is happening in various sectors. At the end of the day, the government should have the best people at the helm of affairs because every day a new form of governance is required to deal with various issues. So the lateral entry scheme, if implemented properly, it may foster, it may encourage more competitive spirit. It may break the complacency that is self-satisfaction of the higher civil servants and eventually, ultimately, it, it may prove to be pioneering initiative in public interest. Today's sixth topic is about maize pests seen in Karnataka. Indian Council of Agriculture Research have warned that invasive pest, invasive agriculture pest fall armyworm was discovered in Karnataka this July. This fall armyworm is a major maize pest found in North America. It arrived in Africa in 2016. Since then, it has threatened, it has destroyed the continent's maize crop. Maize crop is a staple crop which feeds 300 million people of African nation. This fall armyworm, first reported in Central and West Africa in 2016, soon it spread to 44 African countries today and it has proved hard, very very hard to control this. This Karnataka finding is the first report of the pest in Asia. This discovery is more worrisome because this pest feeds on around 100 different crops such as vegetable, rice, sugarcane, etc. Why it is a worrisome fact is because its discovery in Karnataka means it can spread to neighboring states, even neighboring countries in a matter of time. The first line of defense against this fall armyworm will be insecticides like lambda cyclothrin. But the efficacy of this lambda cyclothrin is in field trials. Some natural predators such as coccinellid beetles that can aid biological control. A fungal species called a Nomuria relie also infects this fall armyworm. But these natural enemies are not 
very effective like insecticides which is lambda cyhalothrin thank you